My name is Mary Pitcher, and I began the Pitcher Park Memorial Skate Park Foundation in 2008 after the death of my two sons, Vincent and Stephen Pitcher. You know, every article they did on Pitcher Park basically starts out by saying, Mary Pitcher, who built the skate park for two of her sons who drowned in Kinsey Reservoir. And it seems like yesterday. My family used to go fishing a lot up at Kinzu, and it was a place that we had gone in the past for years and stuff. And that one time that they were there, I mean, Brady and I both weren't there. Before they left, Stevie and Vincy came and gave me a hug. I said, be careful. And I said, that water is deep. Mr. Pitcher and his brother were out in the boat. Vincy and Glenn were on shore fishing. And uh, Stevie and Nathaniel Mills were on the bridge. You know, typical Stevie wants to do something crazy and wanted to do a backflip off the bridge. This is all just reaccount from our friend Nathaniel that was there. Um, he was trying to tell him not to, and then he still did it. And I mean, my brother Vince was fishing on the shore down below and was filming it. I never saw it. I can't bring myself to look at it, but all you hear is Vincey screaming Stevie. <laughs> and the camera goes down. And that was the last thing that you heard him say on the video. I worked for an attorney and I got the call. <laughs> and I just went down on my knees. I just prayed. I said, what's wrong, John? What's wrong? And he said, it's Stevie, Mary Pat. And I said, is he all right, John? Is he all right? And he said, no. <laughs> and I said, oh my God, John. And he said, it's Vincy too. He said, they were underwater for over an hour. And I said, no, John. I said, they swam to shore. They have to be on shore. Look around the shore. He said, no, Mary Pat, I don't think so. There were just no words. When Mary heard the news, there was just no words. It took them seven hours to find them. It was the worst thing that ever could happen to a mother. We were at my mom's house, at my dad's house, and everybody was just like totally depressed, couldn't believe it. And everyone was coming to me for help, support and this and that. And I kind of eventually got tired of all the easy answers, and I got depressed myself, and you know, it was crazy. And then, you know, it was my mom, Mary Pat, basically just decided that she wanted to do something special and that she said we should, you know, build a skate park. Stevie was like my protege. He picked it up really quickly. At first, we would always get in trouble because we'd be skating on the sidewalk so much and stuff like that or in the street. So it's messed up that we sort of always felt, you know, like that it was implied to us that we were doing something wrong. Just by trying to do that, there wasn't really anywhere to do it. My street, when I first started skating, was brick, like a brick hill. I deviate a little bit, but skateboarders would be making little ramps in parking lots and always getting ticketed and yelled at. I never ran into problems with that, but they did it just because, I mean, that's all, they, that's all Stevie at least wanted to do, skate. So he would, you know, he'd ride his board over his buddy's house and get stopped and probably dozens of times really. I mean, they got to know us by name, the magistrate at least, the Malodin. They loved it so much and just for the very fact that they were harassed for skateboarding and biking, I felt that I never did enough, especially for Steven, to try to rectify the situation. Of course, when you think of skateboarding, the first word, the first name you think of is Tony Hawk. 
And so I looked it up online, found out they had a foundation. Uh, our foundation supports public skate parks in low-income areas from either uh, donating money or giving resources, giving direction, um, actually giving step-by-step -step instructions on how to get a park going. You would think in Pittsburgh there'd be plenty of great skate parks, uh, a city of this size and a region of this, of this size. Um, but there hadn't been, and this was a great opportunity for us to have some influence and input in, in trying to get something proper built. Uh, Joe Grishecki, a local musician's son, John, was friends with the, my son. And when they died, uh, he must have told Mike Vallely, who, you know, is a, one of Jonathan's biggest street skating heroes from back in the day. I personally, specifically put in certain energy to try and make a direct impact here in Pittsburgh, you know, for Pitcher Park. I got a call from the Tony Hawk Foundation and they said, this is Mickey Vukovic, we have a donor that wants to reach out to you. That terminology in the nonprofit world was very new to me, so I ended up calling, you know, the donor and Ken who was a former Bridgeville uh, native. He was very down to earth, just a regular kind of guy, and he offered to give us $40,000 to build the skate park in Dorma. Initially they said, oh, we'll take a look at it, bring us the design. And uh, so I did, I brought, we got a design, we brought it to the borough manager, but when it went in front of council, then it became a problem. It is blessed that Vincent and Stephen Fisher deserve an honorary part now after their death, and more that they deserved one while they were still alive. There were several council people that were vehement about never allowing a skate park anywhere in Dormont. They, they basically just went with all the, you know, um, stereotypical um, things that they would think that a skater would do. Oh, uh, they're gonna, there'll be graffiti all over the place. They'll be, you know, doing drugs and swearing and I don't want that on my street, uh, blah, blah, blah. We don't want to bring the city element to the community. We realized that's it. That was the end of that. It was too much. At that point, I realized enough was enough. They didn't make life easy for her. But she's like uns the unsinkable Molly Brown. She is. She is. She just. She just kept coming back and coming back. She wasn't going to give up. The Tony Hawk Foundation became my rock. Uh, they sent me the book Skaters for Public Skate Parks. I read every word in that book. Uh, Peter Whitley, who wrote the book actually came on to a website called The Patch where a lot of anti Pitcher Park people commented on every single article that would come out for the skate park. And Peter Whitley would come back on everybody's negativity and come back with another uh, answer. They kept a close eye on what we were doing. And, you know, if I needed any help whatsoever, they were there. You don't want your kids, your neighbor's kids, or your own kids, or if you're a skater, you don't want to be getting tickets for doing something that you love to do. You want to be able to go to some place and meet other people who love what you do, and you can do it together and be positive about it, instead of hiding from the police behind bushes and stuff. That's not, that's not acceptable. By them, by Dormont doing what they did to me, it gave our project more attention. It gave me more momentum. It made me want to fight. So we went out to uh, Mount Lebanon, Scott Township, and Carnegie, which was Ken's idea. Carnegie just stood out, not, not only for how they embraced the idea, but, but for the site and how the design fit the site that we imagined. Uh, it was just perfect. One of the things that I highlighted is that we wanted this park to be a regional park and open to everyone uh, without limitations. When I met Jack Kabistic and the sincerity 
that he showed and how much he cares about his community. And then I met the council. It was a totally different feeling. I knew immediately that I wanted to be involved, that I wanted to be involved not just being a member of council and giving my vote, but that I wanted to participate in any fundraising and, you know, get out there and spread the word to the, to the kids, the grown-ups, everybody, that we were going to have a world-class skate park at Carnegie Park. Pretty much from there, it was just all, you know, a couple, couple calls to a few other people who donated and the ball got rolling. It was pretty quick. I didn't know who to get to build the skate park. So I got into Concrete Disciples and said, who would you want to build a skate park? And I was like, grind line, grind line, grind line, grind line. So I said, okay, well, I gotta check these guys out. I saw the trees here and the trees on this side of the hill and it just, and these picnic shelters. And they're like, this is like a place, not just for a skate park, but you could come here and hang out all day. You could like, you know, you could skate for a while, you can barbecue, and then also, when I came here, the people here in Carnegie were the most passionate about, like, we will do whatever it takes. It's such a great example of community coming together for, for a good cause. Once a location was found, I mean, it really just kind of it came together in a way that is unlike any other park we've done. Tonic Foundation has worked on projects that all the major skate park builders um, have created, um, uh, Grindline included, and we're working in, in, this, in the skate park world uh, with people like that who really, really uh, are dedicated to what they do. It's awesome to see. Everybody in the company skates, you know. We're all doing it for the same reasons. We love skating. The only reason we exist as a company is because there was a point in time where like nobody's building what we want as, as skaters, so we need to start a company and, and do it ourselves, and we need to figure out how to do it. So that's what we did. Um, you know, fast forward to now, it's still kind of the underlying philosophy of the company. I can tell you that I was up there every single day during the build. Even in the frigid cold, they were under tarps with heaters. We just pretty much built a tent around the entire job site and, you know, had our heaters going in there. You have to constantly change the direction you're going, you know, to fit the weather patterns and you just, you just got to really adapt almost, you know, and you just got to keep moving forward. You can't get beat by it, you know, you can't let it beat you. Can't really make it stop raining or make the sun come out or the snow stop, so you just got to deal with it. You got to be passionate about it. You got to be willing to get hurt, work hard, suffer. It's, it's part of the life, I guess. They have a reputation primarily for building big, deep bowls and, and sort of that type of terrain, which is a highly specialized uh, discipline in skateboarding. All day long, it's like a wax on, wax off. I mean, every day that concrete is smooth as a baby's face. A lot of concrete contractors take a look at Grindline's work and they don't know, like, there's some sort of voodoo, magic shaping voodoo going on there, but they're, they're a well-respected artist. Our construction guys, it's almost like they will do whatever it takes to make a good park. And it's, it's more, I don't want to say it's a selfish thing, but it's a pride thing. You know, it's like, it's, they're not going like, well, I want a good park for my client. It's like their reputation's on the line. If they build a poor park, they're going to hear from it, not just from the community that they're building it for, but from other skaters who are like, dude, what did you do? I mean, we've got pretty high standards as skaters and we want things, you know, perfect.
without a doubt, Grindline took a lot of pride in, in the building of the skate park. Uh, I kind of got the feeling that Grindline was building a skate park that they would be proud of and that they would want to skate themselves. So when you have that, that type of commitment, then that's why you get a park like we have. There's a lot of emotions tied into this project, you know, more than the average project that I work on. It wasn't just one of these things where it's like, well, here's some money and boom, go do it. You know, there was a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of battling. There was, there was a lot of people fighting to make this happen. And, and to see it now where it's like, yeah, here it is. And, and these kids are just going to come here and skate it and enjoy it. And they're not going to know any of that story. But it's amazing that you just get to come here and, you know, enjoy it for what it is. It all kind of coalesces at this moment. You know? This is when you really see what's, what's been created in the location with everything else going around it. And uh, it's, it's that idea implemented, but also, also in, in context with everything else. And that's where it all comes together. And that's the thing that you can't really translate from paper to reality. You're just looking at it in, in, in that two-dimensional form. And so this is really the, this is the payoff. This is where you get to really see it um, you know, in, its, in its physical form. And it's really cool. But all in all, it's the quality is it's insane. I mean, that's what everybody that's been there has, you know, wrote me a Facebook message or, you know, some of my buddies that I see a lot, they'll let me know and tell me. Like, everyone's totally stoked about it. Grindline crushed it. They smashed it. So the park is awesome. I mean, there's something from beginners, the little kids, all the way up to the most advanced, you know. I think you could have some really good contests in this park and really good turnouts. And the kids that are small that are just learning to ride and you'll come back in four or five years and they'll be really good, you know. To be honest, I don't think they could have done a much better job. There's something for everyone and you can stay out of the way up here if you want and skate the benches and the pole jam and the little bank. Or if you get enough confidence, you can try to go through the rhythm section. And then as you get better and better, you know, it's, yeah, it's, it's pretty perfect. Not, nothing's too high and nothing's too low. Everything works and that's because it's designed off of stuff that skaters have, have encountered in the street, you know, pole jams and ledges, and uh, I think it's a great design. I had a lot of fun here. The kids are getting so good that are coming there, and we have kids, when they saw the bowl, they were a little bit intimidated, but now they are, it, it's so much fun to watch them, because every time you go, they're just better and better, and you never know what's going to happen there. When you're sitting there, some amazing feat might happen, and you never know when it will. Oh, yeah, of course. I've been staring at your pictures. <laughs> I didn't realize the park would be finished during this tour, or before this tour started, and I saw a photo of the finished park about a week before we took off, and I was like, we gotta go there, we gotta figure out how to make that happen. And so we did. I mean, we didn't get to bring our whole crew, because a lot of those guys were like, they're flying home, and they gotta go straight off to something else. Um, but we, we brought most of the guys here, and um, super stoked to make it happen. That next day, I went to the cemetery, and I stood there, and I told my sons, I met Tony Hall, <laughs> you know? And it's just, you know, I could almost hear them say, no way, you know? I could just hear them say, no way. It was just amazing. If any other cities see this, they should take this as an example of, of how to go about getting facility for your youth, because um, this one's going to get used all the time. I don't know how much you believe in, in you know, basically like willing something to happen, but you really wanted it to happen so bad, I almost feel like she made it happen. Oh, <laughs>
this it's a reason to smile you know it's a reason to smile like this ha it happened people fought for something they stood up for it they demanded it they put in the legwork the time the effort uh, they rallied for a cause and they accomplished it that's something to really celebrate and be happy about I'm super super proud of the group and the crew that that got it going including Mary Pitcher and the incredible thing they've done here people didn't believe in them people didn't know that it could happen and now you look at this place and there's not a skate park like this within four states in any direction I'm sure there'll be be a crew you know the crew of kids that are always there that every time you go there you're gonna see the same kids we didn't have a park prior to that that we could really take skaters to and feel like comfortable about it <laughs> you know welcomes everybody basically which is nice <laughs> maybe even after a few years uh, maybe we can expect a you know after a half decade or so that add on to the park they build it bigger or they use this park as an example to help get more parks built in other neighborhoods I hope that and from what we've seen everybody will be happy with what we have left behind and enjoy it and keep getting better at skateboarding. Our town was kind of devastated from a flood several years back and I was interviewed then and they said in one word where do you want to see your town in 10 years and I said booming and we're coming up on 10 years and I think this is it. Yeah, I think it's one of the best things that ever happened to the town. Truly. And we owe it all to Mary Pitcher. I'd like to see skaters interacting with with uh, the old people on the street, you know what I mean? I mean that those perceptions, you know, that that people have of, of skaters, and I'd like to see that change. To have a place for them to go that they can call their own and be proud that it's in their community, you know, to invite others here to see the effort uh, is. It's big for Carnegie, you know. I wonder what Andrew Carnegie would have thought of that, skateboarding, hmm. It's important that people, no matter what they do, feel that other people get them and understand them and appreciate them. And Mary absolutely gets them, understands them, and appreciates them. That's another reason why this skate park is so special. I never thought that it would have turned out like that. That definitely goes above and beyond anything that you could have constructed to memorialize them because they would be tearing it up for sure. Having a place to be is the whole meaning, the whole purpose of the park. The response to the skate park from the skaters, the bikers, the rollerbladers, it's really warmed my heart. And although Stevie and Vincy can't be here to enjoy it, you know, through them, this is why it happened. I mean, this is the whole reason.
Bushies in there. Hey, you guys. Bar on behalf of the Fully Flared Tour, my name is Christopher Michael Casey. I want to thank you all for coming out. You've been an amazing audience, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Excellent.